This podcast is part of Mishmash Media. Hey, buddy. Hey, how's it going? Very good. Welcome to another episode of Curbcast. My name is Ivan. And I'm Stephen. And every week, my buddy Stephen and I, we get an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm in chronological order, and we review it scene by scene. And we are in the final three episodes of the very good season five of Curb. We're talking about the ski lift today, Stephen. I thought an episode that I really, really enjoyed. Lots of uh, lots of good highlights in that one. Yeah, I just found this episode not as punchy, um, but once I, once I watched it a couple of times, um, I really, really enjoyed it. And I, I thought Larry felt a bit different in this episode. There was something I, I can't quite pinpoint what it is, but maybe, he was more Jewish. <laughs> well, obviously, but even 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 in the scenes where he wasn't turning up his Jewishness, uh, there was just something he was going like full on like Woody Allen on steroids. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, 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 he was fully leaning into the you know to the I guess New York Jewish stereotype for sure, and for good reason as we'll discuss. But there was something else I can't quite pinpoint it. Maybe I'll figure it out as we discuss it, or maybe you'll make a comment that makes me go, oh yeah, that, that's it. Um, but he just there was something just a bit different about him, and it just kind of made the episode feel a bit different overall but you know that's not to say it was you know it took away from it it was just something i perceived but it was so, it was so subtle i couldn't really i can't really describe it but um yeah maybe i'll figure it out it was almost i think i, I get what you mean i think like in the final part of the episode probably the last you know 15 10 15 minutes larry was almost like he wasn't like the main situation or the main reason for things happening. It was kind of like events out of their control, like the ski lift breaking down and, and stuff like that. Yeah, that's true. I think, yeah, I think I think it was stuff that really wasn't in his making. Like, you know, it wasn't kind of his fault and things happened, no, that's... but he just happened to be there. I think, is, is that what you probably... Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's pretty close. I guess stuff wasn't happening to Larry or being caused by Larry. Things were happening and Larry just happened to be part of it. So he wasn't the... Yeah, he wasn't the the driving force behind plot lines unfolding. Maybe that's mm-hmm. it. I don't know. But um, yeah, there was just something. And look, it might just be me. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But just something I noticed. Yeah. And uh, like you said in this episode, Larry really leans into his Jewishness for, for good mm-hmm. reason, to help uh, yep. his friend Richard get a kidney and also to help himself uh, make it so he doesn't have to give him a kidney. Yes. There were, he's hoping for Lewis Lewis to kick the bucket, but uh, he's still in his coma. He's still alive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's just doing anything and everything, going on ski trips he doesn't want to go on, pretending to be uh, more, I guess, more Jewish than he is, just to avoid giving his friend a kidney. You know, which you know, which is a big deal. Like, you've, it's obviously not a, a light decision, but Larry seems to be trying to move heaven and earth to avoid just giving his friend the kidney. I think at this stage, it's probably easier just to give him the kidney. Yeah, it's almost inevitable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, nothing's, <laughs> nothing seems to be working out. It, all, it kind of right. seems to be headed that way. And I, I enjoyed this episode as well because it did bring back the uh, uh, adoption storyline too. I thought that was, you know, it's been it's been kind of pushed to the sidelines the last couple of episodes. It hasn't really been the main focus. But this one, although not part of the main plot line, they did integrate it. And I thought that was good that they're tying that back in because that's been the overarching storyline for season five. That's right. Yeah, we do see um, the PI Omar Jones again in a scene, very, very briefly, but uh, he does make an appearance. Yeah, I, I think I think they, you know, they're tying it back in just to sort of bring people back. Like, oh yeah, that's that's actually the the main storyline for this season, probably to to wind it up for episodes nine and ten, the last two. Yeah, I think yeah. so too. <laughs> if you uh, want to talk to us about Curb, you can. We've got an email address, curbcastpod at gmail dot com. We're on all forms of social media as well. Our handle is curbcastpod. You'll find all those details in the show notes. Uh, you can support us financially by heading to our Patreon, Patreon dot com forward slash mishmash media which is the name of our fledgling podcast network in which we put out curb and we did put out a seinfeld podcast for about four years um it's called but i don't want to be a secondary character still available on all the podcast apps so if you're a seinfeld fan go back and listen to that that would be awesome and if you want to support us non-financially you can rate us or review us on your podcast app of choice leave us a review let us know what you think and that really helps with visibility the algorithm and um, us appearing in search results indeed and that'll make us be able to afford a trip to the ski a trip to the snow i should say We'll Ooh. be able to, uh, you know, afford to stay in the lodge. Maybe even do a recording there. A yeah, couple of times. straight from, <laughs> straight from. Uh, I don't know. Where's it? Where's the ski lodge in? Uh, straight, uh, straight from. Um, straight to Mount uh, Perisher Blue. Perisher Blue. Yeah, that's. <laughs> that's, a, that's a, I think that's Australia's only like well-known. Mm. <laughs> ski field or ski lodge. What is it? Threadbow? Threadbow. What do they call it? Yeah, I think Perisher is the ski field and Threadbow is a resort. Sweet. All yeah. right, we'll, we'll go we'll go to Threadbow and do a recording. Yeah. 
for, for, some, for some reason. I don't know why. For some reason. Why yeah. <laughs> we, we, need a, we need a lot more Patreon subscribers to, uh, to be able to afford to do that. So if you want to help ah. us, if you want to chip in, by all means do so. In time. In time. <laughs> anyway, Season 5, Episode 8, The Ski Lift. This one aired in the US on November 20th, 2005. Larry's quest to get Richard Lewis a kidney takes a turn when Larry learns about the head of the kidney consortium. After befriending him, Larry invites Ben and his daughter Rachel on a ski trip. Like everything Larry does, the trip ends as bad badly as it started and uh, yeah quite a few good scenes I mean like we said we do see Omar the PI he's back you know in a very brief scene and uh, Larry's trying to figure out ways to befriend Ben he doesn't just want to go up to him to say look I want Richard on top of the kidney donation list uh, he gets to the point where he just rams his car in, in the rooftop car park there to exchange insurance details yeah he forces a meet you know he forces a situation so that they meet and uh, he can create an opportunity where he can uh, yeah get access to him and become friends with him and uh, uh, it's it's quite a quite an elaborate plan. It is, yeah. It's pretty pretty full on. It's a good idea. Yeah, and and considering you know he was told about Ben, I think maybe the next day or two days later, he he crashed his car. So he um you know he turned it around pretty quick, and it mostly works out until the very end. So. <laughs> Except for poor Rachel, who, uh, you know, despite being a young Orthodox Jew, she's very true to her faith. Oh, she's she's devout. Absolutely. Like, she can't even be in the presence of another man after dark, with the exception of her father. I've never heard of that rule before. No, never heard that either. Yeah, I mean, she's even willing to jump off a, off a ski lift, and I think Larry puts it perfectly when he goes, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> yeah, are you fucking crazy? I love how he drops, like, his hyper, I call it hyper- Jewishness yeah. <laughs> when he says, Are you fucking crazy? Yeah, he, he goes back to like his normal speech. Yeah, he's like, This isn't worth it. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna be yeah. real. Here. But luckily, she keeps her phone, her flip phone, uh, stays on the chair, and yeah. then Larry's able to call Richard on it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, probably your favorite subplot, Steve, the uh, story about the big vagina from the nurse who dated Jeff as well. She claims that Jeff had a small PP, but uh, Jeff claims she had a big VV. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> and we find out what the real explanation is at the end. Yeah, no, it's possibly. It's- Possibly, it's the implications real. of it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's grey. I think it's pretty clear. But um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a bit of a shock. I, I wasn't expecting that. Me either. <laughs> Richard's uh, Richard's reaction at the end was priceless. Yeah, no, it was <laughs> it was very well done. Well, you know, if you've seen the episode, you know what we're talking about. If not, or if you can't remember, uh, we'll talk about that when we get to the last scene. Absolutely. Anyway, here it is, the ski lift. Scene one. Larry is by Richard Lewis's bedside to see how he's doing. Richard says that Larry looks good. Richard begs Larry for the kidney, uh, his kidney, and Larry says that Lewis Lewis, his cousin, should donate it. Richard says that he is in a coma and it's too complicated. He laments about being low on the donation list. And he says that Mickey Mantle, who was in a photo with Richard, got a kidney before him. Uh, Richard offers to give Larry the winning ball on one of Mickey Mantle's games, which is on a nightstand, on a, on a stand on, on, the, uh, on the desk drawer. Larry says he has to leave as he asks Richard what he thinks of his sweater, and Richard makes a joke about it and says that he loves Larry and depends on him to donate a kidney. So we have mentioned several times, Steve. Lewis, um, uh, Richard and Larry, you know, they're, they're frenemies, but they lean more towards, like, the friend side. Larry obviously does care a lot about his friend and wants him to uh, to succeed and do well and we do see that Richard is looking uh, a bit worse for wear with his condition and uh, but Larry is he's happy to help his friend just not at his uh, the cost of his health yeah I mean Larry you know he's it's kind of a I don't know it's a bit of a <laughs> bit of a conundrum or not a conundrum but like he, he's doing a lot to help his friend but he's also doing it for his own purpose as well for, so he can get out of it so it's yeah it's just kind of this like double uh you know double purposed effort that is uh that he's going to it makes him look like a saint but it's actually very machiavellian yeah it's it's um <laughs> you know only larry could do something very very nice by trying to find a kidney in any way but make it look machiavellian as in well. something that he's he, he gets out of it yeah he's equally motivated by his own his own needs as well as uh richard so yeah so only only it's Something like that, I think, could be done by Larry and done effectively to you know, to a certain point. I did like in um, in uh, in this scene, and I thought it was just like a, a a simple way that Larry was you know showing a bit of kindness and trying to lighten you know Richard's situation up a bit, especially you know when he's lying in bed and probably doesn't feel great and he probably doesn't want doesn't look great. It doesn't look great. He doesn't want people to come over and see uh, him in this situation. Larry kind of makes a joke of it and says, "Well, you know, if you were a bigger celebrity, you would have been at the top of the list." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and even yeah, Mickey but, Mantle got. One before you <laughs> yeah he was, he was having a dig at him but i thought i thought i thought it was coming from a good place you know he's like even though he's mocking his situation in a way he's uh you know i think he's just trying to make uh richard feel a bit better you know just by making him laugh and he also compliments richard as well like richard i can't remember what he says but he makes a joke as larry's leaving and larry's like you've still got it you're still funny like he's <laughs> 
you know, he's trying to he's trying to just make Richard feel a bit better considering the situation. Yeah, and that's after the comment Richard made about his sweater. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he so makes it, like a joke, a reference to like a show or something. Yeah, and it, it's yeah. I think it's nice to see in a way. It's kind of heartwarming that even though it's a really serious situation and the stakes are high, and you know, Richard's obviously not doing too well, that they can still kind of give each other a bit of shit in love, though. You know, it's mm. it's a it's a foundational part of their relationship, and even with this more serious situation happening, they can still, you know, that dynamic isn't completely lost. Mm. That's what kind of makes their friendship almost realistic, (laughs) pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty common for friends to just give each other, uh, you know, to rib each other and just sort of jokingly insult each other, um, as long as it's not too (laughs) too harsh. I mean, these guys go a bit far too uh, too far sometimes. Don't get me wrong, because they're you know they're not normal people. But um, as long as you're not Will Smith and Chris Rock at the Oscars. Oh man, that. (laughs) What about that? Jeez. Oh wow. Yeah, I thought thought that was all a setup. But when when Will Smith yells at Chris, I'm like, uh, that looks pretty real to me. (laughs) Yeah. Even then, I was like, well, you know, Will Smith, like, you know, for for a bit, people have gone pretty far you know like people have like really leaned into it but someone I, I think i was reading on reddit or youtube or something someone made the comment well it must be real because will smith does not as a as a rule and as a choice does not swear in his raps at all no he doesn't so he doesn't. why would he swear just for like a, a a tv bit for an oscar bit yeah. and i was like that's a really good point if he's not willing to swear in his own rap he's not going to swear you know on a globally televised event yeah, I read somewhere that on uh, the way uh, we won't go too much into this, obviously, but I, I read somewhere that on American, like how the American television networks work, is if you actually say a curse word on a show that's not designated to have curse words, you can actually get fined. Okay, like America's really weird. Like you can watch movies with like limbs and heads getting blown off, but if you say like shit, then you can get in trouble. Yeah, but. Yeah, I think because it was considered like, you know, a G-rated, yeah. you know, like ceremony, you can't say that kind of stuff, but that stuff would be like muted. So that's why apparently like that moment when it happened on the stage, apparently they muted like the second half of it so you couldn't hear it. Right. But other international channels, they had the um the full on the full one. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and and like I was like, well, that's a really good point. Obviously, it's real. And I think it was confirmed by the fact that during the ad break or during something, some sort of like break in the, the event, this footage of, I think it's Denzel Washington and... Tyler Perry. S- who? It was Tyler Perry and Tyler Denzel Perry. Washington. Yeah, yes, yeah. That were, they were sort of mm. comforting Will and, you know, he, he was probably a bit shaken up. And yeah, the whole thing was just, mm. just crazy. It, it was, it was. I mean, it was a shame that the whole thing was just kind of shit, but it was. Of, yeah. it, it overtook the event as well. It was just like, well, no one, no one's going to talk about the Oscars. No one, I don't know who won the best film. You know, the only thing no. I remember is that Will. And it was Will Smith. He actually won the Oscar for best yeah. actor like yeah. a few minutes later. So it was yeah. kind of awkward. It was like, yeah. uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> dude, you just, you just slapped yeah. the dude in front of millions of people <laughs> and all of your colleagues and peers, you know, five minutes ago and now you're accepting it. Yeah, it was it was very surreal. Yeah. I mean, he's gone through a lot, you know, for the, for the revelations of his marriage. Yeah. Uh, you know, his open marriage and stuff, which probably has affected him. Um, But yeah, but anyway, we're not talking about him. <laughs> we're talking about Kerr, but no, it's just, I just thought I'd bring that up. It's like, my point is like, if you have like a friendship like Richards and Larry's, you never get physical no matter what. No, you know, no, no. You, might go, you might have like a low blow joke, but you never like smack each other. No, no, no. And they, you know, they've got years and years and years of history. You know, that's an estate established pattern in their relationship and they, they they know each other's boundaries they would know when if an insult went too far you know beyond a joke and beyond like love it would be you know they, they understand where the lines are chris you know chris rock and will smith they might be friends or friendly but you know obviously they're not so close that he can just openly insult his wife and get away with it you know like it's yeah. he crossed a line um yeah you know, i mean but that's a podcast for another day i think no no <laughs> yeah, I'm, no i'm just just to re, you know to reiterate your point that like you know there's a difference between a long-term friendship with established dynamics and you know two people who are maybe friendly with each other on uh on, yep. you know, on tv so that's true that's true yeah. <laughs> but i'm glad that there's no well with the exception of richard and larry wrestling in season one there's never really been more physical no competition. no, no. And Larry's, you know, Larry. Neither one of them are, you know, they're they're not they're not really uh, physical people. No, not as young as they used to be. No, they they're not the people. They're not the, not the sort of people to throw a punch or a slap. Don't think so. Larry is talking to Richard's nurse, who's downstairs, and she says that she knows Jeff as they used to date a long time ago. She reveals to Larry that Jeff has a small penis, and that caused problems with the relationship because Larry keeps probing her, saying, "What was the problem? Why did you break up? You know, why didn't it work out?" And she reveals that, and Larry can't believe what he's hearing. And she thought that it's funny. I like how she thinks that guys just talk about their penises all the time to each other. Yeah, and Larry's like, 
no, guys don't do that. I mean, you and I, we don't talk about each other's penises off air. I mean, it's not really a guy thing to do. No. <laughs> no. So, yeah, it's just kind of like, it's kind of weird how a, like a lady, like she thinks that it's normal for guys to talk about that. It's like, mm, no. I think maybe for her, it's a case of, well, you know, men talk about sex. I think, I don't think that that's controversial to say, you know, men are pretty, uh, you know, it's a, it's a common topic of conversation amongst mm. friends and, and men in general. So I guess by extension, maybe she thinks that, well, if they talk about sex, they must talk about their penises because they're, they're a main part of sex. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I, I'm pretty open about sex with my friends if it's a if it's a if it's a topic of conversation that we all want to have. But I've never talked about my dick specifically. Um, no, maybe. you know, it's I've never denied its existence, but it wouldn't be the crux of a conversation. No. So anyway, on the weekend, I uh, you know I, I did this with my dick and blah blah blah. It's <laughs> it's it's kind of implied. It's like, well, yes, I I had sex and obviously my penis was involved. <laughs> it was, yes. Yeah, you know, it's, so. it's like, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> You'd hope so. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's um yeah no, I just find it fun, interesting how like she she believes that jeff had a small penis and we think maybe you know he, he maybe is a bit on the short side that's probably another reason why jeff and Susie don't get along maybe uh, yeah maybe because that's... of jeff's jeff's weight in addition to his uh, uh you know thing downstairs not being too uh satisfactory for uh, for Susie. maybe that's a couple of other factors that are uh, the reason for their marriage breakdown but uh, now we find out what the real reason is later on yeah it doesn't seem unbelievable that jeff would have a smaller than average penis you know and i think i think his size is something to do with that as well like you know it is a well a well established fact that the bigger you are the uh, more retracted your your dick is, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's harder to access, you know, like, and that's not to shame anyone who's of a you know bigger size. It's just based on physics and and logistics, really. But yeah, like when she when she said that, when I first watched it, I thought. Like Jeff is pretty, you know, even though he's a sleaze bag, he's got like a, he's got a, he's got a confidence with women. Like he, he thinks he can get women. He doesn't come mm. across as, you know what I mean? Like I, he's I got think, a, like a false bravado about it. Yeah. Him. Yeah. But it yeah. seems like a real bravado, whether he's successful or not, he, he still thinks that, well, I can get women. And I think if he had a really, really small penis and it had caused him problems with his marriage or previous relationships, I don't think that that bravado would be there. I don't think mm. he would be cocky and like flirtatious and you know what I mean? I think, I don't think he would be yeah. who he is. So. So it, it doesn't really line up with, I guess, how he's acted and, you know, just his like general confidence that he has. Mm. But like I said, we find out the real reason isn't him, of course. it's more her. Yeah. No, so that, that, that makes that makes perfect sense. I mean, if Jeff if Jeff did feel inadequate about his uh, what's downstairs, then you're right. He wouldn't be as confident around women. Yeah. yeah no, he'd be pretty, he'd have like really low self-esteem. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. No, that's, that's, yeah. that was my first thought. I'm like, no, nah, this doesn't, this like it doesn't line up with who Jeff is, so obviously no. there's something more to this, and yeah. and we find yeah. out. <laughs> we find out in this scene actually something much bigger. Oh yes, indeed, much much wider. <laughs> Jeff and Larry are sitting by Lewis Lewis's bedside at the hospital. Larry tells Jeff about the nurse, and Jeff remembers who she is. And uh, Larry tells Jeff what she told him about his allegedly small penis. Jeff says, "No, that's not the case. She actually had a huge vagina, and that was the actual problem." <laughs> And they debate about big vagina ladies getting away with deflecting the problem to small penises. So it's like, yeah, so, so they're just like, just because women with big vaginas, they think they can just go around saying we have small penises. That's not fair. And then uh, then they get believed. Yeah, I think um, I don't want to be too, you know, I don't want to dive too deep into the topic, but... I think it's fair to say that women tend to cop more criticism of their bodies compared to men. You know, they're mm -hmm. judged more harshly. Yes. But I think one situation when it comes to, you know, judging of people's bodies, sizes or adequacies or whatever, I think when it comes to genitalia, I think men get the raw end of the stick in terms of like size being important. But at the same time, there's probably more variance in size of men's dicks than, than women's vaginas, I think. Yeah, porn Maybe hasn't really true. helped too much with that. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I can, I can, in a way, I can kind of understand the frustration because they're like, well, you know, no one ever talks about the size of women's vaginas. Why are, why are men always, you know, held to task about having smaller dicks or why are big dicks so highly esteemed? Maybe, you know, maybe we should flip that. I don't think anyone should be shamed for any part of their body, but I can kind of see where they're like, yeah, you know, they kind of get a bit like riled up a bit. They're like, yeah, 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 we're going to, you know, we're, we're sick of being shamed for, for penises. We're going to flip it around. Yeah. And they claim that big vagina ladies get away with it, but I, I've never heard of ladies with big vaginas claiming that men have small penises. This is probably oh, another naive take, just like the nurse with uh, men talking about their penises. This is probably a naive take from Jeff and they think that anyone with a woman with a big vagina can just say, oh, he has a small penis. And it's as yeah. if there's mil mil millions of them, of them that do it. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's almost cartoonish in its like uh, understanding of, you know, just the general variance in the size of genitalia. That's it's, right. You know, it's, it's a bit ridiculous, but it's, you know, it's funny. 
It's funny. <laughs> we see Lewis's doctor from a couple of episodes ago, Steve, and uh, he walks in and he says basically straight out, and it's something which I'm surprised wasn't mentioned a couple of episodes ago. He says he's on to Larry due to his suspicious questions and many visits to Lewis. <laughs> the doctor says he's waiting. Larry's waiting for Lewis to die so Larry doesn't have to donate a kidney. And <laughs> I love how like the doctor's just been like suspect on him for the last couple of episodes. And um, Larry basically says, yeah, you got me. Yeah. I I think it's in the episode uh richard needs a kidney or lewis needs a kidney lewis needs a kidney yeah yeah, yeah and you know that's when he first goes they went to the playboy mansion that's what that's when the doctor makes his, his appearance yeah, yeah 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 and in that scene like at the start you know larry's trying to probe him a bit and towards the end of that scene the doctor does walk away going okay like you know something seems a bit off so i think the seeds were planted from the very first uh interaction they had and obviously, you know, in subsequent visits, you know, he keeps asking, probably keeps asking the same questions or slight variances of the same questions. Mm -hmm. And the doctor's like, this is not, this is not someone visiting out of concern. There's some agenda here. And he obviously yep. all together. This is one scene where I thought it was, I thought it worked and I enjoyed it, but it just seemed a bit different for Larry where he just concedes. He just goes, yep, you got me. And he's like, he's, he's impressed. He's like, you figured me out. Like you've, you see through my, my well, well played. Yeah. He's like, well played. And he just, he just, you know, he even like, he even makes an, an expression towards Jeff. Like, Hey, like this guy, he got it. He nailed it. And it just shows that I think Larry has lots of respect for the doctor too. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. the way, and the doctor's intelligence. Yeah. 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 Like I think like normally Larry tries to worm his way out of a situation or like adds more lies to it or like, you know, he tries to, he tries to deflect or lie his way out of a situation but in this in this case it's not often that you see larry just go you know what you're right you caught me out i've got this ulterior motive respect to you well played it, i liked how larry did it but it just wasn't it wasn't typical of his you know how he normally deals with that when he's when he's confronted or when he's uh you know when a when a spotlight is shone on his bullshit normally he just tries to he never just concedes it's like yep you're right you got me sorry he's just like yeah it was it was it was enjoyable, but just unexpected. Well, we have mentioned in the previous episodes that Larry, for the first season or two, would always like vehemently defend himself for everything he did. And then I think you made a point where, like, maybe in season three or four, he kind of got to the point where he's just too deflated, and he thinks I've been trying to defend the hell out of myself you know, for so many years, and I'm still being seen as the bad guy. Maybe I should just give up. So maybe it's one of those other situations where Larry's like, you know what, I can't fight this doctor, and yeah. there's nothing I can do. So I'm like, yeah, you got me. It's fine. Yeah, that's true. He probably mm. yeah, he probably realizes it's just not worth the energy because he's not going to convince him otherwise. So I'll just yeah, it's better to just go along with it than to keep lying about it. Yeah, if Richard's kidney situation happened, say in like seasons one or two, there'd probably be a whole episode dedicated to Larry trying to clear his name. Yeah, he would, he would be going out <laughs> of his way to discredit the doctor or convince the doctor that he's wrong or whatever. Yeah, you're right. Now he's just yeah. like, well, you know, you're you're an intelligent, observant man. You got me and respect. And I just love yeah. how he makes that like kind of he gesture towards Jeff of like, hey, like this, yeah, this guy's good. Like he, hmm. he's fucking onto it. And Larry's not doing anything like illegal or anything. Like he's not no. trying to kill Lewis or anything. No, no, so no. He's just not, like he's, waiting for him to die. No, he's not doing anything illegal, but he's doing something that's very fucking immoral. And Absolutely, yes. And just, <laughs> just But there's crazy. nothing the doctor can do. Yeah, it's just gross. Like, you know, when it comes to people's lives and organs, like you don't, you don't fuck around with that. And Larry's- yeah, you gotta be quick with that. Like, sort yeah, of Larry's thing. trying to take yeah. advantage of the situation to, or put himself in a position where he doesn't, like you said, he doesn't have to compromise his own health, which is not totally unreasonable, but you can go about it in a way where you're not like trying to capitalize off someone else being in a coma. Sure, sure. <laughs> ah, that's our boy Larry. But I do like I do like you like you said when Larry like looks to Jeff and Jeff's like, oh, okay. Yeah, like hey, you got me. Yeah, you got me. Jeff and Larry are walking out of the hospital elevator, and Jeff says that he and Susie's friends can't go to the ski trip with them coming up, and he offers Larry and Cheryl to join them. They spot George Lopez, who recently had a kidney transplant. George greets Larry and is introduced to Jeff. He says his wife donated a kidney to him. Larry asks what needs to be done to get higher up on the list, and George says that the head of the kidney consortium can be sucked up to so Richard can move up the list. I remember because obviously George Lopez, you know, he was he's a comedian and actor himself. He obviously knows Larry, you know, being in the comedy scene and stuff. I thought George Lopez at this point was like, wasn't he like a larger guy? Or was that maybe when he was younger? I don't but he know. Looked, he looked like a bit older and like thin and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe maybe a kidney transplant, you know, that can take a toll on a body. Maybe that like <sighs> maybe had one for like, real. That, like dialysis. I don't know a whole lot about kidney transplants or dialysis, but I imagine it would, you know, if you can't retain fluids and I imagine it would fuck with your digestion. Maybe maybe like it makes you shed weight. Yeah. Maybe it's like a result. Maybe it's, if he if he has lost weight, maybe it's just a result of his um, you know, what he went through either before his kidney transplant or an effect of it after. I don't know. You know, maybe yeah. 
like I can imagine, and if I'm totally wrong on this, please correct me, mm. but I can, I can easily imagine a scenario where if you have a major organ transplant, you know, that your diet has to be really, really specific. Like you have to monitor everything you do, yep. you know, to increase the chances of success. So maybe he had to go on a strict diet as part of his kidney transplant and that resulted in weight loss. I don't know. Well, I, don't, I just Googled George Lopez. Apparently he had, he has a genetic kidney condition that caused okay. him to deteriorate. And he actually legitimately had a kidney. Uh, he actually had, actually had a kidney transplant in 2005 and his wife donated the kidney. Okay. Well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, as we've discussed many times, Curb doesn't embellish reality really, except except Larry's world or Larry's existence is the only thing that's really fictionalized. Everything else seems to be legit. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just interesting how it's like, yeah, it, it actually really happened. That's why yeah. I thought George looks a bit like sickly. I thought he was a bit more like lively and stuff, but no, that, it sounds like that actually happened. So good on George for being part of the show, part yeah. of the episode. Yeah. Totally. So yeah, he says that the head of the consortium can actually uh, be sucked up to, so he can Richard can go up the list. Hmm. Larry is talking to Omar, the private investigator, to investigate the head of the kidney consortium. His name is Ben Heineman. Cheryl meets Omar as he walks off. Cheryl gives Larry a ski jacket and says that they should go to the snow, and Larry doesn't want to, as he spots a bag with edible undies inside them. So we find out that Omar must have a bit of a uh, bit of a fetish. Yeah, it could be could be something for him and his wife, or maybe it's or something his, to do with a case. You know, I don't or know. His lover, secretary. <laughs> His secretary. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember actually. Is he married? I assume he is. I think he is, yeah. 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 You know, it could be, you know, something personal or it could be part of a case. Yeah. You know, maybe a clue or maybe something to help with the case. I don't know. But yeah, Edible Undies really took me back to like late nineties, early two thousands in Australia. And you'll know what I mean, Ivan. Um and our Australian listeners probably our age will, will uh, uh remember. There was a um like a gift shop that had like novelty gags and stuff called um uh, what was it called? I can't remember. Anyway. I don't remember. Granny Mays. It's called Granny oh, Mays. Okay. Yeah, they were all around Brisbane and I think, you know, other capital cities in Australia. And right. they just sold like novelty gifts and like pop culture things. Kind of like what a comic book shop has turned into, but with like sure. a, with like a naughty element. It was like an sure, adult shop sure. combined with a comic book shop with all the pop culture stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Edible, I remember when I was a kid, we used to go and you couldn't really, kind of like the uh, the porn section of a video shop, like you had to, if you wanted to have a look, you either, you know, you had to have a little sneaky, make sure the, the person at the counter wasn't looking in you. Had like a little sneaky peek into the adults only section. You had to open up the curtain and, and sneak in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to be a bit, mm-hmm. uh, a bit discreet, a bit, dodgy, a bit dodgy about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the same with like the the adult toy section or whatever at, at Granny May's or at similar gift shops. Um, and I always remember seeing edible undies, and it just it just took me right back to trying to trying to take a peek at this like weird adult sex toy section of a granny of a of a gift Granny Mays. Shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I no, I saw those. It's just shocking, like because you're right. It could be either like part of a case, but I don't think Omar would keep one in his jacket unless yeah, he was, like I mean, he was going to go see something for him and his, you know, his wife or girlfriend or mm-hmm. whoever he's sleeping with. Mm-hmm. You know, it could be a thing that they're into, or maybe they just want to spice up their sex life or explore something. Maybe we'll find out later in in the last couple of episodes. Is yeah, the sex hound, maybe. Yeah. He, like Omar seems like a straight, you know, by the book kind of guy. Yeah. Whereas yeah. Uh, you know, we we find that he possibly has a bit of a kinky side too. Yeah, I mean, you know, lots of uh, lots of very straight, you know, straight like an arrow people in public are a bit, you know, a bit more, uh, a bit less straight behind closed doors. They're usually so, the most deviant. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's where, that's where they're the usually li- into all the nasty shit. That's it. That's where the librarian, you know, like sort of mousy librarian cliche comes from, you know. But behind closed doors, there are a, a, a wild stallion. That's um, what Bookman says in in Seinfeld. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, the library um, says behind closed doors, yeah, about the, the librarian. Yeah, they're all buttoned up on the outside, you know, during the day, but at night, oh, <laughs> we don't, they have a life and we, or something like that, and we don't want to know what they do <laughs> with their lives. Exactly right. Yeah, could be, could be a case. You know, he might have just picked it up at, a, at an adult shop in his way. You know, he could have been stopping in at Larry's and thought, oh, there's an adult shop, I'll go pick it up, and he just had it in his pocket, or, or sorry, in the bag, because it looks, I think he actually bought it for himself, because it. You know, yes. it's still in the shopping bag. It looks like he went to the adult shop and bought it for himself now that I think about it. But why would he? Yeah, it just doesn't. I, unless it, he had it in his briefcase and then he took it out. Mm. Yeah, I think he might have had it in his briefcase and then he took it out uh, to like shuffle some things around and then he forgot right, to put, he it, back to put it back in. Yeah, yeah okay. that's probably it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was I mean, trying to be discreet. I yeah. kind of I kind of am curious about it. Like, I obviously, I don't want it to be like too, you know, it's not that big of a deal. But the fact that we're not given any context, you know, as to why he has it. Hopefully, they address it in the next episode, just in a scene or something, you know, like why he had it. That would be that would be satisfying. We'll probably find out more about Omar's sex life <laughs> in future. Or maybe Larry will ask him next time. He'll be like, yeah. hey, so uh, I had these edible undies. <laughs> what about these? <laughs> they were pretty delicious. They were delicious. I had to eat them for survival. He'll have, <laughs> to, buy, he'll have to buy him a new pair because he had to buy them to survive, yeah. 
Of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Larry runs to Omar to hand them back to him, as he uh, and but Omar's already disappeared. Larry hides them in his jacket, and it's one of those Larry puts something in his jacket and totally forgets about it tropes that we've seen before. Larry is talking to Omar the next day on the phone. Omar has found the kidney guy as Jeff walks in. Uh, as Larry, oh, and mind you, Larry's in his office, by the way. Jeff walks in as Larry tells him what happens. He says that the man is an Orthodox Jew. Larry says he has to befriend him so Richard can move up the list as he comes up with wacky ideas to become friends as he comes up with an idea yeah i i you know i think i said before that um you know that larry created a you know a pretty up until the very end of the episode a fairly successful plan a fairly effective plan to uh to befriend ben and and help richard out so yeah i, I think it's i think it's impressive of, of how uh you know how quickly he created and executed a plan and how well it went and we see what happens which is uh, which is quite hilarious it's totally something we didn't expect no jeff and larry i call them the duo so if you hear me mention the duo i mean these these uh, larrigans they drive to the rooftop car park at the hospital as they spot his car with his license plate that omar gave larry larry drives into ben's car uh, but it causes no damage larry goes to drive into the car again and jeff gets out of the car this time and larry's airbag deploys <laughs> As Jeff helps him out of the car. So it must have been a, yeah, the first one wasn't really too much of a whack, but the second one really, uh, really got Larry. Yeah. <laughs> so good. <laughs> nice physical comedy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Larry's car engine is smoking as they spot a dent in Ben's car. Jeez, that car is unstoppable. It's almost like bulletproof. <laughs> Even after all that, it's barely had a, had a dent in it. Larry leaves his pre-prepared note on the windshield. So basically the plan was that they were going to crash into Ben's car, exchange. Larry was going to give his insurance details. And the plan was that they'd meet up and uh, Larry would mention the uh, Richard situation. Yeah. Interesting way of doing it. Mm. He couldn't make a few calls or, yeah, I mean, because he's like Larry David. You think he could have maybe pulled some strings or something, but uh, no, he has to do it the hard way, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, he's never, I think most people, if they were desperate to help their friend out and also help themselves out, would start thinking of outlandish ideas, but then go, hang on, like this seems too ridiculous. There's got to be a better way and not act on those impulses or those first initial ideas. You know, most people don't just go first idea, best idea. They think it through. They're like, oh, you know, maybe maybe this isn't a good idea to pretend that I'm more Jewish than I am, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But Larry, you know, Larry's not very good at impulse control. He's not very good at thinking through his choices. So Larry, if anyone's just going to think of a crazy idea and then see it through and commit and force everyone else around him to commit just for, you know, a singular a singular goal, it's him. <laughs> That's Larry. <laughs> yeah. Totally. So yeah, yeah, within the context of Larry, perfectly. Uh, you know, it lines up perfectly. It does. It does. <laughs> Larry is wearing his Jewish cap, and uh, he, he walks into a restaurant to meet Ben, the, the head of the kidney consortium, regarding the insurance details. Ben is glad that Larry left a note, as Larry is acting like an Orthodox Jew, albeit an extreme stereotype of an Orthodox Jew. Yeah. With the Yiddish and everything. Larry answers his phone and keeps his voice going in front of Ben. <laughs> <laughs> he always sounds like his dad, doesn't he? Like a younger version of his dad. Yeah, yeah. He's really turning up that that sort of st that typical Jewish American accent and his body language and yeah, he's just he's just really turning it up to ten. He's got his buttons done all the way up. He's wearing yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't remember the name of Jewish cap, or on and, his cap. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. Did you say yarmulke? Oh no, I didn't say yarmulke. Is that his like, yarmulke? I think, I think that's what it's called. That's what's called a yarmulke. Okay. I yeah. think so. Um, if it's cap, not. Yeah. Let me know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, he's just, you know, he's just really, really leaning into it. I'm going to propose a word to describe or a, a bit of wordplay to describe Larry's uh, acting uh, in this. And I think you'll like it. He's okay. very exaggerated. Exaggerated. <laughs> oh, yes. G got me. G got me. <laughs> nice. <one. laughs> nice. I didn't expect that at all. But yes, very exaggerated. Yeah. Exaggerated. Anyway. Exaggerated. Yeah. Yeah. I get you. Hey. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, Larry, Larry, uh, as in real life, Larry David really turns it up, doesn't he? Yeah. Totally. Press Ben. Yeah. Ben says that he loves the Yankees as well as Larry, which makes Larry happy. Uh, and Ben says he also loves to ski. And Larry, I love Larry's reaction. He goes, oh, I'm taken aback by this. <laughs> Just his kind of, he's kind of, he's literally taken aback when he hears yeah. Ben loves to ski. I, I love his reaction to it. Well, for Larry, uh, that's like the perfect opportunity. He's like, well, I'm going to go on the ski trip. You know, this is perfect. Or, you know, like he, for him, it's like, well, this is going to work out great. Yeah, yeah, and and he invites Ben and his family to go for a ski trip. So there you go. It all it all works out. And I think Ben he seems like a very forgiving guy. He's very uh, you know for for the head of like a consortium for an, a very vital organ. He's quite a very open, relaxed guy. 
He seems cool. Yeah, he seems like a yeah, he just seems like a good dude. I think it's a bit dubious how he, you know, he uh he's willing to just bump people on a list because they become like his friend. Like that's obviously not very good. <laughs> um, no. But yeah, other than that, like just interpersonally, yeah, he's, he's a nice dude. He's He's like personable, personable, uh, you know, he's friendly. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he's good. He sounds like he might get some kickbacks though, because George Lopez makes a good point saying you can suck up to him to get what you want. So yeah, very, uh, very open to like bribes or favors or whatever. Yeah. Open to receiving them. I don't think he'd be the sort of person that would, would accept monetary bribes. I think he just no. plays favorites with, if there's a personal connection there, or if he's impressed by the person, he's willing to play favorites. I think that would mm. be about as far as he would go. I don't think he would actually yeah. accept like, you know, here's a bunch of money to bump me up the list it's more you know it's more of a personal thing or someone who might have like be famous at the time like at the time yeah, Lopez yeah, yeah. Had his own sitcom in the early 2000s yeah so he was kind of like you know he wasn't like he, he, he was he was like up there he wasn't like uh, i guess he was almost on the a list at that time yeah, yeah um but he had like his own big sitcom and stuff back then so yeah. i think also ben kind of i think for his image and his career he kind of wants to deal with people who are like in the limelight at the time totally. if it was like 1988 or 1990 or something and richard needed a kidney he probably would have bumped him up because yep. you know around then he was like pretty famous Famous. But yeah, but you know, the idea is Richard Lewis is like washed up, you know, like an actor comedian. He's not getting any work. Yeah, a bit dated and stuff. I think yep. that's kind of like kind of like the shtick. Whereas I think, yeah, I think Ben kind of he likes to say, look, I gave George, I helped get George Lopez a kidney, or yeah. I helped get this actor or actress a kidney. So yeah, it kind of helps with his image and his reputation too. Totally. Especially in LA. Yeah, you know, where it's all about image and, you know, relationships and stuff. Yeah, I, I just, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think he would do it for people who he personally likes, you know, friends would get more priority over a random or, yeah, celebrities. If it, But I don't think he would take any material bribes like money or favors or anything. It would just be more who the person is. Yeah, he sounds like he just wants the glory rather than the money. Yeah, that's he true. Probably, he probably gets really good money anyway. Yeah, I mean, you know, I imagine he's, he's fairly well compensated, so... Very well compensated, and he's the head of the kidney consortium. And probably one of LA's. Is it? Is it? Is it Sinai Hospital, Mount Sinai? No, I think it's. I, I don't think Sinai. they mention the hospital, do they? Mount Sinai. Is it Mount? No, not Sinai. No, but it's some. It sounds like that. I know it's not Mount Sinai, the poison. It's, but it's, it's like, like Mount, Sinai, Sinai. I think that's something. Sinai. Well, did they it's mention like the name of the hospital? Or I think no, it's S I N A I. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they don't mention the name at all, do they? No, no, I no, no, no. I think it's implied it's like a high-end private hospital. I imagine so, yeah. Just I don't imagine think... like the most high-end private hospital in LA. Yeah, yeah. So he, I, I can imagine being the head of a consortium of, of of a department in that hospital would net you uh, pretty pretty cool stuff. Yeah, he'd be he'd be doing well. He would be, yeah. I love baseball. love oh. baseball, especially the Yankees. I love to ski. Uh, you, uh, I, I, my, my yarmulke almost fell off. I'm so taken aback. <laughs> What? Skiing? You said skiing. Yeah, well, I'm not good, but I... I'm, I'm not so good myself, but I love it. You love it? Oh, it's my favorite thing to do in life. Ach, wegs, wallach, wesselach. Larry meets Richard's nurse at his house downstairs and he explains what Jeff claimed about her, as in her having a big vagina. <laughs> she gets offended at the remark and denies that she has a big vagina. <laughs> Larry is upstairs talking to Richard and tells him about his friendship with Ben, which makes Richard happy. Larry asks if he can give Ben the Mickey Mantle ball so his place is sealed on the list. Uh, they're looking around and the ball disappeared. It was on the stand before, but it's uh, it's gone. Richard gets upset as Larry asks who else has been here. Richard says that a few of his friends came uh, and he only invites a few people and no one else could have stolen it and Larry has a thought. <laughs> I love this part. The nurse walks in and Larry explains the missing ball. The nurse says that she hasn't seen it. He accuses the nurse of stealing the ball, which is worth a lot of money, as she stashed it up her vagina and walked out with it. Yeah. And Richard is in shock at what Larry just said. Yeah, he's just, he almost like, he almost like uh, mouths an apology. He's almost like, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. he's, he's in shock and he's like embarrassed for her. And yeah. <laughs> the fact <laughs> she's possibly stuck it up. Up. <laughs> yeah yeah it was i didn't expect that i was like oh okay I, I was like where's this big vagina thing going and they bring up the baseball like i didn't really know where it was going but as soon as larry started talking and saying and as soon as you started seeing the nurse in my head i'm like oh yep obviously yeah, he's gonna say you yep. stuck it up your she big smuggled vagina it. and walked out she with smuggled it. it up her vagina um, she would have overheard you know about the mickey mantle ball i had a little theory i didn't pick it up until i think the second or third watch but at the start when uh richard you know, and Larry are talking about 
at the start of the episode when they're talking about Mickey Mantle and Richard brings up the ball, when he says, you know, it's in the will, it's your ball, it's worth $20,000. It quickly yeah. cuts to the nurse and you see her like looking shocked, like, wow, that's a, that's a, mm-hmm. that's, you know, she's, she's really impressed or amazed by it. Maybe Larry picked up on her body language during that, you know, during that scene, like what, like she, she didn't ignore this conversation. She stopped and looked shocked. Like maybe, maybe Larry just saw that quickly and that's, oh, that, maybe, yeah. He's you know, that's what force. made him suspect. Well, you know, she, she was there when, Richard stated the value. She reacted to it. She did. That's not nothing. You know, it's not, you can't accuse someone of stealing based on a, on a facial expression and being in the room, but it's not nothing, you know. And coupled with the theory that she has a big vagina. And yeah, like it's, it's, know, all, it's all, it's all, it's all. Yeah, it's not. It's not a strong case. It's not gonna. She's not gonna get a guilty conviction in a court of law. No. But you know, it's 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 not completely out of the realms of possibility. It's a few little bits and pieces that you know someone like Larry, with his like crazy mind and paranoia, could put together and you know come up with a solid uh, theory. Yeah, <laughs> I imagine if that was the case, she'd just give it a nice clean and uh, and go to the pawn shop. And, totally. Uh, you know, yeah. get twenty grand for it. Yeah, you know, even if she got two grand for it, five grand, she you know that's a Mickey Mantle ball. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty <laughs> scummy. The Yankees. Totally, yeah. I mean, it's pretty scummy to steal a, a prize piece of memorabilia off a sick and dying man, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a quick, uh, quick, quick bit of cash. Mm, yeah, it would be, it would be. But yeah, no, you're right. You make a good point. I mean, the nurse, you know, she did hear it and she was like, oh, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, Larry, I think that, I don't think Larry would have thought anything of it when it happened. But when, you know, in his mind at the time in this scene, he was like, well, I remember her reacting to it and she was in the room. Like, that's, there's something there. Something there, yeah. And yeah. Richard says only a couple of his friends turn up. Yeah. So obviously, yeah. it's not like he's got hundreds of people walking in every day. No. So he, he know he he can keep in check, you know, who's who's going into the room. So there's only a few suspects. Totally. Larry wouldn't steal it because number one is his friend. Number two, he could probably afford to, you know, <laughs> he can get change out of his back pocket to go pay for the ball if he wanted to. Yeah. So and he, he also. Doesn't worry. I think he has a bit of a, an axe to grind with the nurse as well because- He does, about Jeff. About yeah. About beli- Jeff. Belittling, so to speak, uh, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, he's insulted on behalf of his friend and he's got a bit of a, you know, when I said before they riled each other up a bit about, um, you know, these big vagina women getting away with it. Like he's got a bit of a, a bee in his bonnet already. So I think that contributes to his his um, his um quick accusation. He doesn't want another one getting away with it. No, he's like, no, that's it. I'm going to stand <laughs> up for the, for, the, um, for the small penis men right. and, you know, to confront the big vagina women- bringing us down. Rich's reaction at the end is priceless. Yeah, yeah. He's just, he's embarrassed and shocked and he doesn't know. Yeah, he's just, yeah, he can't, but he can't do much because he's sick in bed. He's just like got to, he's just got to deal with it. He does, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's good. Larry and Cheryl are having dinner with the Greens. Uh, Larry says he'd like to go on the ski trip, which makes them all happy. He says that Ben and his daughter will come as well, if that's okay with Jeff. And he explains to Jeff who he is and why he's befriending Ben. And Susie, (laughs) I love this part. Susie asks if he's doing this to help Larry or avoid being the kidney donor and Larry says it doesn't matter very George Costanza answer it doesn't matter (laughs) it doesn't matter yeah and Larry says that's not the worst of it so yeah so even Susie's kind of you know even even she has suspicions about Larry at this point yeah I mean she always does but yeah she's always she's always on the negative end for for Larry isn't she yeah I mean she you know she can see through his bullshit and she sometimes she gets a bit uh, aggressive about it but she you know, she she's probably the most she's the person who most consistently doesn't put up with Larry's shit. She's just no. like, no, nah, unacceptable. Fuck you. Done with you. You know, just shuts it down. So yeah, so yeah. she's naturally suspicious or uh, cynical about it for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just good. Like even Susie's, like the doctor was suspicious, but now Susie's suspicious. So it, it sounds like Larry's uh, Larry's secret is unraveling to yeah. lots of people. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's you know, if you if you're visiting a, a cousin of a friend who you know is not even close with the friend, let alone you and people start to hear about why is Larry visiting this guy all the time it's it's not hard to put together that he's got an ulterior motive no 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 <laughs> especially if you know Larry yeah exactly it's like Larry Larry's always got an agenda he doesn't he rarely does things just to be nice no. he doesn't he doesn't know you know he doesn't know this guy in a coma you know Richard barely talks to him so why would Larry visit him all the time like this is not just he's not just being like you know he's not just upset that this guy's in a coma there's something going on here <laughs> uh, he also doesn't want to give his kidney you know like it's it's easy to piece together yeah, and Susie can call it out too. Yeah, totally. She, yeah, she. Like I said, she's she's the most consistently the person who's most consistently suspicious of Larry's actions and choices. Mm. So if anyone's going to put it together, it would be her. 
It would be, yeah. At the ski lodge, Larry is showing off Susie to Ben and his daughter Rachel to look to look like he is married to a Jew. So Larry pretends that Susie is his wife and Jeff pretends that Cheryl is his wife. And I'm sure Jeff uh, Jeff is loving that fantasy. <laughs> he's loving it. Yeah. yeah we've when we've, we've seen many up. times in previous episodes that Larry, you know, um, um, Jeff has a thing for Cheryl. So, uh, you know, he's probably thinking maybe, uh, you know, maybe we can really get with the role play and uh, get together <laughs> during yeah, this trip. Sure. I'm sure, um, you know, uh, Larry, uh, Jeff even says to Larry that Cheryl made an appearance in his uh, in his like fantasy Rolodex in his masturbation Rolodex. And oh, that was a little while ago. I think that was last. Yeah, season, yeah. Last season so he's four. even yeah. just blatantly admitted it to Larry that like I fantasize about your wife. I masturbate over your wife. So if he's got the opportunity to sleep in bed with her. <laughs> yeah, like he doesn't, you know, he respects, you know, she throws the, you see, like she throws the pillows on the, on the floor and he doesn't protest at all. Like he's not, he's not going to do anything wrong, but uh, I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, when the idea was proposed that we'll, we'll, we'll swap beds. I'm sure that thought crossed his mind that, oh, maybe, you know, there's maybe. A, a billion chance, but maybe something will happen. Maybe. The, like Jim Carrey said in Dumb and Dumber, a lot of the chances, one in a million. So there's a chance. <laughs> That was Jeff's attitude. A chance is a chance. Chance is a chance. Susie is wearing a headscarf as they go along with their made-up story. And apparently, I read a bit of trivia about the headscarf on Jewish women. And apparently, married women don't have to wear the headscarf. It's only uh, single women. So that was a bit of a uh, bit of a goof there. It was interesting. Larry says that he would love to meet Ben's wife, but he says that she passed away six years ago. Uh, Larry asks what Ben does as he explains that Larry says that. A dear friend of his named Richard Lewis needs a kidney and Larry claims he, despite the fact he is, Larry claims that he's actually not a match for Richard and he can't donate his kidney, which is uh, absolute bollocks. Oh, totally. You think as well, like uh, with Ben being, you know, not a doctor, but I'm sure he spends a lot of time around doctors. You think that if if this all if this plan went if it all sort of played out how Larry was hoping it would where Richard was bumped up the list and he got a kidney you think eventually Ben would find out that Larry was a match like that information there's a risk that that information could reach him and that Larry was just full of shit so I think that's a bit of a, a bit of a plot hole in Larry's whole scheme mm, unless if he, if Larry could claim privacy issues or something but even then maybe if you're the but head of the consortium because you're right he's not technically like a medical doctor is he no. he's more like he's probably like a more bureaucrat like admin kind of guy right yeah for sure but yeah. yeah i mean but it's not like i don't know like larry spent a lot of time at the hospital that doctor you know the i can't remember his name but the doctor who figures out larry's agenda <laughs> um, you know I, I just look the risk is low but there's still a risk that that information comes back to ben and he's like hang on like you just you lied to me to use me well maybe things unravel in, in episodes nine and ten i mean it doesn't work maybe Ben will feel betrayed. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't work out anyway because it's a moot point. So it, it's not. It's just. It's just something that I thought that. Well, hang on. Like that's a. That's a. That's a, a risk that Larry's taking. That's all. Yeah. Which he hasn't really thought through. No, that's no. a little bit of a plot hole. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, we met Interesting. at a Hillel uh, mixer, a function. Oh, in college. Yes, a singles, and he was there trying to pick up every girl imaginable. I was pretty swinging in those days. Yes. I was in the band. Okay. The girls were pretty interested, you know, with the guitar. They liked that. Not like true. a rock band? Not true. Jewish folk, folk. music, uh, Jewish folk. folk songs. Oh, like what songs? Um, Gefilte Fish Blues. Um, my freaking back is killing me. Larry and Susie are in the bedroom as she tosses him a pillow to sleep on the floor, like you mentioned before. Uh, Cheryl is reading in bed and she does the same for Jeff. And Jeff is a bit, a uh, little bit upset. He thought maybe, you know, even we were just you know, lying cuddled together. Larry doesn't have to know. <laughs> He's probably thinking that, but uh, Cheryl won't even do that, which is no, good. No. They're all sleeping except for Larry, who's uncomfortable on the floor. He goes to lay, <laughs> he goes to lay on the other side of the bed as Susie wakes up and asks, what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> As Larry says that his back is sore and he can't sleep because we, we, we do know that Larry has some back issues. Yeah. Uh, she screams at him and tells him to sleep on the floor and he meekly goes back to the floor. She, What she says is, what the fuck are you doing? I don't give a shit about your back. I don't give a shit about your back. Yeah. <laughs> she like, doesn't want to bother with it. I just love her open hostility towards her. Like, I don't fucking care. Like, fuck off. Like, just get out of it. Like, she just doesn't care. And she I, probably says the same thing to Jeff. <laughs> oh, <totally. laughs> to like, she's, you know, she's, she's not anyone. She's not someone who mince words to anyone. No. But especially to Larry, just, she just doesn't, there's no, there's no like diplomacy. There's no like thinking about, you know, there's trying no camaraderie. to, like, there's none yeah, there's no like communicating in a in a soft way. It's just like you know, if it's in her head, it's coming out, and she doesn't care. I just I love it because she's the only person. Yeah, that doesn't you know? Like she goes obviously she goes along with this this plan. Like she she's not 
always pushing back against Larry's schemes and plots and stuff. Like she plays it, she plays along with it sometimes, like in this episode, but she just consistently calls him out. And I just, I fucking love it. Even though yeah, we you know, said that she's not a, she's not sometimes not a great person, just how intolerant she is of Larry's bullshit and how, yeah. how much she doesn't care about just saying what everyone else is thinking consistently in front of everyone, just to Larry on his own, like, Whatever the situation, she just speaks her mind and it's, you got to respect it. Yeah, I mean, I do, I do. <laughs> I find it interesting how Susie actually doesn't care about Richard Lewis. She's like, well, he's a drunk, a druggy, drug addict. You know, he doesn't yeah, need another kidney. Yeah, but the fact that she still goes along with it, I don't know. I just find it interesting. Well, I think I think for someone like Susie as well, like there is, there is kind of a, you know, she's not immune to like a social pressure. Like Larry mentions the idea at dinner in front of Cheryl and Jeff. Like, you know, there is a bit of like, not peer pressure, but you know, there's, it's more complicated. And I think even though she doesn't care about Richard, like she doesn't have much sympathy for him. I don't think she's so cold hearted that she wouldn't go along with a little plot, a little scheme to potentially save a man's life. Mm, you know what I mean? Like that's like, that's pretty fucking brutal if she, you know, I mean, not that she should have to go along with this situation, but if a man's life is on the line, like she's not that brutal. No, she's not that brutal. No. But isn't Richard still a client of Jeff's at this point as well? Isn't he was, sorry? Isn't he still a client of Jeff's at this point? Because I think I think Jeff takes Richard on in an earlier season, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, I I think so. I yeah, even though Richard's not getting any work, but no, yeah, he's no. still on the books. So I think yeah. Jeff, you know, probably also was a favor to Larry because he's Larry's friend, and he and you know he, he you know Jeff loves Larry, you know, yeah. as a friend as well as as well as um, a manager. Like they're still really good friends. He kind of wants to help his friend out too. Totally, yeah. Even though yeah. Richard isn't making him money, he still wants to wants to help. Yeah, it's like regardless of yeah, like Susie, regardless of what she thinks of the man personally, I don't think she thinks well he deserves to die. I'm no, not, no, I'm not that fucking. I'm not that cold hearted. Like oh, mm. and like I and like like I said, you know, they're at dinner. You know, it's like it's not just it's not just affecting her. It affects Larry. It affects Jeff. It affects you know to a lesser extent Cheryl. Like this, you know, she's a she's a smaller part in a bigger plot. So you know, there's less room for her to just reject it and go, no, nah, fuck that, and then fuck mm. you sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nah, she, she, has, she has a heart. Under that tough exterior, she does have yeah. some heart. Yeah. yeah, totally. Cheryl is making breakfast and asks, and Larry asks why she's making bacon as it is not kosher. He throws it in the garbage. They ask how they went last night in, in the beds as they hug, and just as they finish, Rachel, the daughter, walks in. She asks uh, Larry and Cheryl if these are the same plates that they ate pot roast on as they have to have meat and dairy separated, and the daughter says that they have to bury the plate as it was cross-contaminated, and Cheryl wonders why they have to do this, and Larry mm. is playing along and, and pretends to be on the daughter's side so uh yeah rachel is that orthodox she can't even eat you know other food off the uh the plates that they had pot roast for they have to bury the plates uh, did, yeah. they, did she mean literally bury them like put them in the ground i think so yeah because because cheryl's just like well i'll just wash them and she's like no no i think she says they have to be purified you have to be purified she, she yeah just, yeah it's like the word purified which is a pretty strong word that's a very strong word it's like just you know you just put some dishwashing liquid on them and she wouldn't and just say yeah i, I purified them yeah, well, <laughs> not with dirt yeah and she wouldn't know the difference I purified, them with, uh, I, crazy. I purified them with lemony fresh detergent. Indeed, yeah, morning fresh. Pine fresh. <laughs> yes, orthodox fresh. Pine fresh. They're pine, they're pine fresh purified. They are indeed. All of your yeah, coconut needs. Yeah, very good. Very uh, lucky that Larry and Cheryl just finished hugging. I, I, I had to watch back on that scene a couple of times. Did Rachel notice that they were hugging or... Do you think that they just, just walked in as they stopped embracing? I don't know. I mean, even if she did catch them, it doesn't, like, it doesn't, nothing happens regarding that. Like, she doesn't, it no. doesn't make her, you know, she doesn't bring it up or it doesn't, she doesn't talk to anyone about it or it doesn't make her, doesn't really change the rest of the episode. So, I don't know. But yeah, I, I it's, a, it's a close one. It's, I couldn't tell either way. It could have been, could have been, you know, they just, just escaped her view or she just caught them. You know, but like sometimes, you know, when you, when you walk in on a situation, not exactly this, like, you know, not your uh, your father's new friend pretending to be Jewish. <laughs> That's a pretty unique situation. But like, sometimes you can't tell. You're like, did I just catch someone doing something or did I misread it? Like, you know, like, yeah, it, it, it'd be hard to tell for anyone, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, very lucky. But yeah, Rachel, uh, yeah, we see how orthodox she really is. It's, uh, yeah, well, good for her, I guess. She's, she's <laughs> extremely devout. Yeah, she's very committed. She's good for her. Yeah. I think as well, like, you know, she's a bit younger and she's a bit more like, you know, like I've met, you know, I've met religious people in my life who, as they get a bit older, they get a bit more relaxed about their faith. They're still very devout and it's still a very big part of their lives, but they're yeah. willing to 
bend the rules a bit more just as they realize that life is a bit more complicated and that there's a lot more gray you know when you're young you're a bit more like well it's it's either this or this you know and as you get a bit more understanding of the world and life in general you tend to be a bit more relaxed about it so i think i think some of it's how like how strict she is is also to do with her age her age and i feel like maybe because the mum died six years before she would have been a young girl so i think ben probably really instilled the orthodox judaism in her and he was I mean, probably ben, like really ben, devout. Ben's willing to, you know, he's very devoted and he obviously being an Orthodox Jew is sort of the center point of his life, but he's still, you know, he still operates in the gray sometimes. Yeah, he does. So he's not, he's not like a, he's not a, you know, he's not a Puritan. Uh, you know, he's, he still sort of crosses lines and stuff. So he does. Whereas I know, think Rachel, I think, like we, we see that she doesn't cross any lines at all. No, 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 nothing. Even if there's no consequences, she's like, no, no, it's, this is the right thing. Yeah. When you're a bit younger, you're a bit more rigid. I think in your thinking, it's like there's right and wrong, whether it's yeah. about politics or your religion or whatever it's like there's morals and immorals but when you're a bit older you're like well sometimes there's some gray she I probably think, grew out of it yeah i think i think she would just ease up a bit as she got a bit older and you just relax you just mellow out a bit yeah it's like you don't have to bury your uh, dishes in the dirt anymore. Oh, you're like it's like you know an example my cousin used to be married to a very devout muslim man and when he was younger i you know i knew him for years and years they're no longer together he when it came to drinking, he was like, he wouldn't just say, no thanks, I'm not having a drink. He would say, I can't drink because Allah would disapprove. Like he would tell sure. you the reason, sure. the, the Islamic reason and justification as to why he couldn't drink. It was very, very just like, this is why, and I'm telling you why, and I'm like, I'm telling you why it's important that I don't drink. And then five or 10 years later, once he got a bit married, uh, once he got married and relaxed a bit, he would be like, uh, maybe I'll have a beer. You know, like- yeah. It didn't make him any less devout a Muslim, but he just you just relax a bit. That's just all. Just relax a little bit, yeah. Yeah, I think I think in five or ten years she would be a bit more like, eh, just watch the plates, it's fine. <laughs> you know, God's, God's got bigger things to worry about than a than an unpurified plate. Indeed. I'm sure there's billions of them in the world right now. Yeah, totally. Larry is trying to hold his skis in his arms as Larry and Jeff fall out of their ski lift chair. And Larry is going downhill. He ends his ski run and he greets Ben and Rachel, who are down the mountain, down the slope. Rachel says that she's going for one more run, and Ben asks Larry if he wants to go with her as Ben is tired. Larry accepts but Rachel groans at the thought of Larry being with her. He doesn't, she doesn't like Larry too much. No. Uh, ben says to Larry before they go that he can put Richard higher on the list and Larry is very grateful for this. So obviously Ben's having a really good time. He really likes Larry. He likes the fact that he's supposedly married to Susie and uh, yeah, he's like, I'll put Richard up on the list. He's, mm. uh, he's happy. Everything's everything's good. Yeah. No, this, this is what I said before. Considering this plan was like cooked up in a day or so and it could have gone very wrong very very quickly. So far, it's working out pretty well. But well, it almost we'll, does go wrong at the end, but we don't. Yeah, I mean, we, like, we yeah, don't like, find out the conf- said, consequences like, probably till till next week. Yeah, no, that's what I said. Like up until this point. Oh, this it, point, yes, it's yes. playing out exactly as he as he wanted to, but that's obviously right. it falls apart uh, very soon. Oh, but, but like I said, we'll see next episode what yeah. happens. <laughs> Maybe Ben uh, hates Larry. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. We have no idea. We've never watched it. Larry and Rachel are on the chairlift going up the mountain as Larry is making small talk. The chairs stop as Rachel says that that happens sometimes for a few minutes they're still waiting after 50 minutes and the sun begins to set she says rachel can't be with larry after sundown as she is not allowed to be with any other man besides her father in orthodox judaism larry says these are extenuating circumstances as they're still waiting for the ski lift to uh you know move and hence the name of the episode of course the scene cuts to a bit later on as the sun is is basically set larry is freezing and he's hungry and just like you know that's happened a couple of times to larry before he opens up his jacket and he finds the edible undies that he put in there a few days before he opens the box and starts eating them and rachel is disgusted (laughs) you know what those edible undies kind of look like the texture of them do you remember Mm. roll-ups fruit roll-ups yeah 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 yep I, they I kind know. of had that, that that kind of look to them, didn't they? Yeah, it's kind of shiny. You know what I mean? It's like a dull, shiny, a dull like sugary shiny. looking thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like a plastic, shiny, plastic, waxy kind of. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I, yeah, 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 like roll, a waxy thing, yeah, like a fruit roll, roll up. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, roll ups are exactly what I didn't think of that, but yeah, that's spot on. <laughs> Larry's just like eating it. <laughs> He's all famished. I like how he kind of like tears it as well, like almost like a roll up. Like he almost yes, like, yes, yes. It's not, a, it's not as um gelatinous as a roll up, but he you know it's he doesn't just bite into it and pull it away. Like there is a bit of pull. Yeah, yeah. He really like, goes for it. He, like he's starving. Like a bit of like melted cheese or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so lucky that he had something to eat. Yeah, it's a bit. They're a bit chewy. Yeah. Larry says that she still has two minutes till it's dark. And Rachel says someone has to jump off the chair as she can't be with a man after dark. And then Larry's like, what are you fucking... Like, I love how he drops his, like, 
overt Jewish voice. And he's like, he goes back to his normal voice and he goes, are you fucking crazy? Yeah. It's like when it comes to like, at that point, if you're going to drop your act, it's like, I'm not jumping from a ski lift. Like, and the fact that she kind of, she doesn't say it, but she kind of, she's implying that he should be the one to jump. Like, yeah, it's got to be. Not, I mean, they're not too far off the ground, but. Still, for an old guy, he'd probably be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and it's like, how far away are they from the camp? Have they got to trek through, like, three feet of snow? You know, it's, like, not just simple as, like, jumping down and going home. Like, there's, you know, you got to to consider a few things. And, you know, but the fact that she's, like, there's this implication that one of them should jump. Yeah. No, no, you should jump. You should jump. You want to do it. You really don't want to be in the situation. Okay. It, that's that's on you, not me. That's right. <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm, not here, I'm gonna sit here and eat my undies out of my jacket. Mm-hmm. You can fucking go if you want. Exactly. Me, you know. And, yeah, and she does that. She jumps off the lift, yeah. and Larry is still eating the undies. <laughs> yeah, it's just like that's. It's like yeah, cool. Like I'm I'm not jumping. No, <laughs> don't, good. don't don't imply that it should be one of us. It should just be one of us. Should be young spryly girl like you. Exactly. <laughs> you want to go? I don't care. Yeah. In the final scene, Larry discovers that Rachel's phone is still on the chair, on the ski chair because she um she gave him uh, her phone to hold. Uh, Larry calls Richard on her phone to tell him that the kidney arrangement may not work out. So even though Ben said that um, Richard would be up on the list, he's, he's probably thinking that maybe Rachel will tell Ben what happened. And, you know, maybe Ben will change his mind. He asks Richard, um, Richard asks his nurse to look for Larry's phone as he may have left it there as Larry is asking Richard to look for it. And uh, <laughs> Larry says, I'll ring it. He rings the phone and it starts ringing near the nurse's pants, implying that she hide, hid it in her big vagina. And Richard and the nurse both look at each other in shock. And that's the end of the episode. <laughs> I love that. Oh, it's so good. I did not, <laughs> it's like I ringing, mean, like, because Richard's head is, like, near her, like, you know, like, he's in bed, and the nurse is standing over her, over him, and, you know, kind of like her, her her chest area is near near his head. Yeah, she, <laughs> and yeah, you can hear, like, her. ringing from there. Yeah. That's well done. It's actually a well done ending. Yeah, I liked it. I like I like the production as well. They kind of, whether they added the sound in post-production, I imagine they did, but they made it a bit muffled. Yeah, muffled. Yeah, like it's like it's concealed in something. Like yeah. it's hidden up inside someone, yeah. And I love uh, I love how the nurse is looking down at Richard in his eyes and Richard's looking up at her, the nurse. Yeah, it's like, eyes. oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great ending to the episode. Actually. Oh, perfect. That's yeah, one of the best. Yeah. I'd say top three ending out of the whole series so far. I think so. Oh, yeah. top three. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely, definitely in the top five, top 10. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, I, I thought it was brilliant. I it's did not awesome. expect it. No, nah, me either. That was fantastic. But yeah, that was the ski lift. Uh, I give this one four and a half Larrys out of five. Really, really enjoyed it. One of my wow. favorites of the season. What about you? I give it four. Not, four. not okay. as highly as you. Well, kind of like last week. Like I think I liked it just a bit less than you, but I did really like it. And again, like last week, it took me a few watches to fully appreciate it. It just, for some reason, it just didn't hit me straight away. But when it did, I, I really liked it. I loved Larry's exaggeration. Um, yeah, exaggeration. And, and, mm. and the big vagina storyline was, was great. I thought even though that was the B story, line i thought it was the strongest storyline i think because of the topic like you know a giant vagina and hiding things up there like that's just like that's just so wacky and weird that's uh, definitely what i would imagine that. if seinfeld was like an r-rated show they'd talk yeah. about that george and jerry would just talk about big big vaginas yeah like, they'd have like a, you imagine like if it's r-rated seinfeld they'd have like a conversation amongst about it totally yeah so, yeah. so your girlfriend had a big vagina that was, oh, that was, was big jerry <laughs> you know <laughs> stuff like that yeah yeah totally I can um, imagine that. Yeah, it's like even though even though most of the plot was devoted to Larry, you know, befriending Ben and then going on the ski trip and the, the big vagina storyline just kind of like backed it up a bit, you know, it was the B line. I thought it was the stronger one just because of the topic. Mm, I, I think so too. Yeah, I, I loved it. And the ending was just fucking knocked out of the park. Yeah, a knockout. I love how the doctor just called out Larry. And yeah. He's just like, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. here. You're not here. You're here for nefarious reasons. I just love that. Yeah. And then Larry's just like kind of shocked. And he's like, yep, you got me. Okay. Yeah, that was, it was good. Oh, yeah, that was all done. Yeah. <laughs> very good. Anyway, yeah, very enjoyed that episode a lot. And we're down to our last two episodes of season five. So we'll be uh, wrapping up the season over the next couple of weeks, which is exciting. Yeah, a lot to, a lot to cover in two episodes. You know, will Richard get his kidney? Will Larry be the donating kidney? Mm-hmm. You know, well, is he adopted? Is he not? What's gonna? What's the story with the edible undies? You know, there's a lot. There's a lot to cover. They've really uh, got to tie it all up, but I'm sure they will. In, indeed. And for those who are new to the, to Curbcast, thank you for listening. This is the first time we're going through the episodes, so we yeah. have no idea what's happening next week. We 
you yeah. have no clue. It's all a surprise to us. Exactly right. <laughs> if you want to email us, you can. We have a an email address, funnily enough. We do. Um, curbcastpod at gmail.com. You can check us out on social media as well. Our handle is curbcastpod. You can support us financially by checking out our, our uh, Patreon. Details for that are in the show notes. And if you want to rate us or review us, you can check us out on any podcast app of choice and uh, leave a five-star review. Spread the word. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be amazing. My name's Ivan. I'm Stephen. We'll catch you for the penultimate episode of season five next week. Thank you so much for listening and uh, you take care of yourselves and each other. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. This podcast is part of Mishmash Media, an independent podcast network. Follow us on social media at Mishmash Media AU or support us on Patreon. All those links are in the show notes.